I've said before that there has never been direct fossil evidence of group behavior in T. rex proper. I was wrong. In this video, I'll cover the likelihood of T. rex group behavior by looking at modern analogs, behavior of closely related taxa, and the information that blew my mind. First, let's look at modern animals. Birds and crocodiles are the closest living relatives of non-avian theropods, and can give us some clues to their potential behavior. Crocodilians are archosaurs that split off from the lineage that led to dinosaurs, so they represent a more basal condition, while birds are much more derived and likely more socially sophisticated than their ancestors. Looking at both ends should give us valuable information about our extinct friends. It's no secret that birds are complex animals. Their advanced vocalization abilities range from distinct songs to imitation that can even include human speech. They also represent a wide spectrum of gregariousness, ranging from roadrunners, which are solitary hunters, to budgies, which live in flocks of tens of thousands of individuals. While there aren't any avian dinosaurs today that fill the apex predator niche like tyrannosaurs did, large-bodied birds of prey like eagles fit the bill the most. They're still quite different in terms of body size and metabolic requirements, but close enough to speculate about. Eagles typically mate for life, forming monogamous nesting pairs after complex courtship displays. Golden eagles will display only once, at the beginning of their relationship, while bald eagles repeat the process with their partners each year. In both species, their offspring will stay with them until they're capable of taking care of themselves, and in times of scant resource availability, huge groups of bald eagle adults will roost together. Those groups are not without conflict, however. Fighting over food, territory, and social dominance occur in big eagle populations. Interestingly, that matches what we know about intraspecific conflict in tyrannosaurs. Multiple species are known to have commonly fought by biting one another's faces, indicating frequent contact and combat. Eagles, when not actively nesting, can be highly territorial, and can fight intruders to the death if aggressive vocalization and displays don't work. I'm, I'm not saying that tyrannosaurs mated for life just because eagles do, but it's interesting that frequent combat between individuals of the same species does not at all discount gregariousness. What about crocodilians? Given their huge size and apex predator role, they may be better comparisons for tyrannosaurs than eagles. They engage in complex nest building and fierce maternal care, with mothers guarding the eggs for months and carefully leading hatchlings to water before releasing them into the world. They are also frequently gregarious, although not to the same degree as birds. A 2021 paper described the sociality of Nile crocodiles like this. Socially, crocodiles are gregarious and observe hierarchy based on age and sex, but do not actually form clusters. Rather, they congregate in shallow sections of wetlands to feed, defecate, bask, court, and mate. This model may represent a less rigid social structure for tyrannosaurs in which the theropods care for their young, frequently gather together in groups, and have an established combat-based hierarchy, but don't completely rely on family structures as adults. Under this model, they would likely cooperate and use collaborative strategies when hunting. A 2014 paper found instances of multiple crocodilian species herding prey towards other members of their group, taking turns driving the prey and then eating it. This was observed as an effective tactic on fish, frogs, and pigs. While not the normal method of hunting for crocodiles and alligators, it has been documented by naturalists since the late 19th century. This would predict that T. rex frequently hunted alone, but was not averse to cooperating with other rexes, flushing out prey and ambushing. What about other non-avian theropods? We can't observe the behavior of extinct animals directly, but we do know that at least three other tyrannosaur genera have been discovered in large groups. The Rainbow and Unicorn's quarry yielded a mass mortality event of Teratophonius, including one adult, one subadult, and two juveniles, likely killed by flooding. At least a dozen Albertosaurus, mostly adults, are known from the dry island bone bed and also believed to have been killed by flooding. Multiple Despletosaurus were found together in the two medicine formation, without an obvious cause of death although they were also found with hadrosaur remains that showed clear signs of feeding. Whether that instance was opportunistic mobbing or coordinated hunting can't be determined from the remains we have. Then there's the Canadian trackway showing three individual tyrannosaurs moving together in the same direction, possibly following the hadrosaurs that left less organized tracks nearby. So not only do T. rex's closest living relatives exhibit varying degrees of gregariousness in collaborative hunting, but other tyrannosaurs have repeatedly been discovered in mass mortality events. The Teratophonius and Albertosaurus cases are unlikely to have been predator traps since they weren't discovered with large prey animals that displayed signs of feeding, and the Despletosaurus group might have been one, but it's difficult to tell. How about Tyrannosaurus itself? Surely if we discovered a group of the most famous dinosaur, it would be all over the news, right? Well, apparently not. You know Sue, the famous T-Rex specimen who's also one of the biggest? I don't know why this hasn't been talked about more, but Sue did not die alone. She was discovered with three, count them, three, other T. rex individuals of different ages. 
there was a sub-adult, and two juveniles. The four tyrants were buried together, their bones mixed into a single pile. The bones of the sub-adult showed signs of T-Rex bite marks on them, and Pete Larson, who worked on the dig, firmly believes that this group of T-Rexes was wiped out by another group. I don't know how much evidence there is to support such a specific conclusion, but it's a very interesting thought, and potentially possible. The remains of the other three Tyrannosaurs are held at the Field Museum, so I hope they eventually get more media coverage. This information has been published since 2002, so why are we not talking about it? It was brought to my attention by Bucky Durflinger, who's discovered two T-Rex skeletons and has been studying the Tyrant Lizard King for nearly 30 years. Now, does this discovery make a nightmare of T-Rex's canon? Not necessarily. As with anything in the fossil record, there's very little we know for certain, and questions remain about the circumstances these tyrants were buried in. A group of Tyrannosaurs together doesn't necessarily mean pack hunting. It could have been opportunistic mobbing, although the fact that one of them had bite marks from another rex seems to indicate that wasn't what was going on here at the time of death. Additionally, the individuals besides Sue were quite fragmentary, so we're clearly missing part of the picture here. Observed behavior of living relatives and the likelihood of gregariousness in close cousins are far from smoking guns by themselves. Just being related to another animal doesn't mean that your behavior is going to be identical. But here, they do provide context for the Tyrannosaurus group. T-Rex lived with gigantic, dangerous animals, and collaborating with other members of its own kind would have made taking down giant hadrosaurs and ceratopsians much easier. The fact that these predators were spread across the ontogenetic spectrum is intriguing. Was Sue traveling with offspring? Were they pursuing something together when disaster struck? Were they even related, or was it a company of convenience? Or did Sue randomly eat a bunch of kids immediately before she died? Going back to the hadrosaurs. As I mentioned, I found out about this thanks to Bucky, who shared my surprise at the lack of media coverage around a nightmare of T-Rex that we've known about for decades. Bucky has a lot of hands-on experience with a half dozen T-Rex skeletons from near Faith, South Dakota, including some of the biggest individuals ever discovered, and has been hunting fossils in the area since he was eight years old. His anecdotal experience is that the vast majority of the herbivorous dinosaur fossils there belong to hadrosaurs, as opposed to the northern part of the state where Triceratops dominates. He noted to me that the T-Rex is discovered in hadrosaur-dominated environments like Sioux, Cope, Bucky, and Victoria tend to be considerably larger than those in ceratopsian areas. Note that this trend has not been subjected to statistical analysis and strays into the realm of speculation, but let's talk about it for a minute. Bucky's personal opinion, which makes sense to me, is that an Edmontosaurus is going to be much easier prey than a Triceratops, at least in terms of a head-on brawl. One has giant spikes, the other doesn't. However, Edmontosaurus is also more difficult to catch in terms of linear speed. The Faith Rexes may have experienced more selective pressure to work in groups to catch fast prey, and due to an easier takedown may have had more ready access to resources allowing for a greater body size. They would have needed to focus on speed as well, creating the perfect blend of power, velocity, and teamwork. That is, of course, speculation. And as mentioned, even Sue being found buried with other T-Rex individuals isn't a smoking gun, although it may be a warm one. More analysis should be done of the circumstances in which she was found. For example, the crocodile and turtle material with her may indicate that the T-Rex group was buried in a flood, but Neil and Pete Larson, who worked on the excavation, said that they were Sue's stomach contents. Go ahead and subscribe so I can keep you updated on all the new information that comes out of this. When I spoke with Bucky, he also gave me amazing information about a particularly impressive Tyrannosaurus specimen that he discovered, E.D. Cope. I won't spoil too much, but not only was Cope likely the biggest T-Rex known so far, but may have also been the oldest. Keep an eye out for details. Make sure to join the channel as well. Megatheropod tier and above members gain early access to videos, and Megasauropod members get to choose an extinct species profile video when they sign up. And then again for every year they're part of the tier. Thanks for watching.